We are nearly done with the game. There are just two more elements I want to cover. A shadow and sounds. Both of those are reasonably straightforward to implement. Let's jump right in. Once again, I am inside of main.py and let's start with the shadow, which we're going to create via another method. Let's call it draw shadow. No need for custom parameters in this one. The way this one is going to work, we first of all going to create a whole new surface, which we do, let's call it shadow surface. And this one we are creating with pygame.surface. I haven't used pygame.surface before, but basically so far we created surfaces by importing graphics, like we have done for the apple or for the different body parts of the snake. All of this. But you can also just create a plain surface on its own. This one wants to have two arguments with the width and the height. In our case, in our case, we want to have a surface with the same dimensions compared to our window, which we get via the display surface, self.display surface, and this one has a method called get size. Don't forget to call this one. That way, we are getting one surface. This one will later contain the shadows. But for now, just to see what we get, let's self.display surface split this one. We want to blit the shadow surface at position zero and zero. That way, since it has the same dimension as the window, it's going to cover the entirety of the window. Also really important, we have to call this method after we are drawing the background, but before we are drawing the snake or the apple, because well, the shadow should be below both of them. Self dot draw shadow, and let's see what we get. And there you can see, we can only see blackness. And that is because the default color of a surface is black, which isn't going to be too much of an issue. Instead, what we really want to do, let me add another comment here for the surfaces. I basically want to draw all of the surfaces that we have drawn so far, meaning the apple and the snake on this surface as well, except I'm going to make them pure black and add a bit of transparency. For that, first of all though, we have to blit the surfaces we have created earlier. First of all, self.apple, and then we want to blit the scaled underscore surface. The one we created down here to have the scaled apple in the right position. This is what we want to blit again. And we also want to do all of that in the same position, meaning self.apple.scaled underscore rect. And now if I run all of this, we are getting an error that apple object has no attribute scaled surface. What happened here? Basically, inside of the apple, we only create the scaled surface attribute and the scaled rect attribute when we are calling the draw method, which only happens after we are drawing the shadow. Because of that, these attributes do not exist yet. To fix that problem, inside of the dunder init method of the apple, we have to create self.scaled surface, which for now can simply be self.surface, and we want to copy it which is a method of every surface. Besides that, we want to get self.scaled rectangle, which we can get by simply copying the entirety of the line that we have covered in the draw method. With that, I can run main.py again. And now, well, we can't really see a difference because the apple is in the exact same position. So, well, not much gained. But however, what we can do now is we don't want to place the apple in the exact same position. There should be a bit of an offset. Essentially, inside of settings, we have a shadow size. This is just another vector that is fairly small, four and four. The way you have to think about it is that this is an offset. So we want to get the same rectangle, but now we want to get the top left. So one position, which is also going to be a vector, to which we can add a vector, so the shadow size. If I now run this again, we have the apple looking just a bit different. If you look closely, you can see we have another apple to the right of it. That is a good start, although there are lots of other problems. First of all, we are covering the entire background with a black color. To get rid of that, we will need a color key, which works kind of like a green screen, where we define one color on this shadow surface that we want to get rid of at all times, which has to be a color we are never going to use. Usually this is a pure green color. So we want to fill this surface with a color via a tuple. 
This is an RGB tuple where we define red, green, and blue. For red, we want to have zero. For blue, we want to have zero. And for green, we want to have the full amount, which is 255. If I now run this, we have filled the entire background with a green color. And now we are treating this like a green screen. So I want to get shadow surface again, and then get rid of every pixel that is pure green, that has this specific color. And that we get via set color key, which wants to have one argument, which is the same color. And now if I run this again, we cannot see the green anymore. But if you look closely at the apple, there's a green outline. That is because the pixels around those are not perfectly green, which for our purposes isn't much of an issue. We are going to make all of them black very soon anyway. So this is fine. First of all, though, we have to also draw all of the parts of the snake. And this we can do with a for loop that is very similar compared to what we have done in the snake. This for loop to be more specific, as a matter of fact, I can just copy it. I want to do the same for a loop. The only difference is I want to blit all of this on the shadow surface with an offset. Meaning we don't want to use the rectangle anymore. We want to use rect.top left plus the shadow size. On top of that, we have to look at self.snake.drawData. And with that, we get a weird looking snake. And this is exactly the result we wanted. Now we are basically drawing the entire game at an offset below our actual game. All we have to figure out now is how to make all of these surfaces pure black with a lower transparency. And that we can do via a mask. And the result here is going to become a bit trippy. Basically, a mask in Pygame is going to be another surface where we only have two colors, black and white. And these colors are defined by the transparency of the surface we are looking at. For example, if we have a surface like the apple, all the pixels that have some kind of color value are going to be white, meaning all of this part is going to be pure white. However, all the other pixels that don't have any value, all of these pixels and these pixels are going to be black. Usually a mask is used for collision detection, where you can check each individual pixel if there's an overlap and this gives you a collision, which can be really precise and very useful. But in our case, we want to use these pixels for drawing purposes. So the way we are going to create a mask is with pygame.mask and then from underscore surface. The surface we want to look at is the shadow surface. With that, we have a mask that right now doesn't do anything. But we can use it to overwrite the shadow surface. This one should now be mask and then to underscore surface. If I now run all of this again, we are going to get some weird results. And I hope you can see what I just explained. Wherever we had a pixel with actual color information, like for the snake or for the apple, those pixels have become white, whereas all the transparent pixels are pure black. Which is a good start, but in our case, we want the exact inverse, for which a mask actually has a dedicated method. All we need is mask.invert before we are turning all of this into a surface. If I now run this again, we only have the black shadow for both of the entities. That is perfect. Finally, we have to add another color key to get rid of the white color. I want to get the shadow surface, then set underscore color key. And for this one, a pure white color is simply a tuple with 255, 255, and 255. If I now run this again, there we go. We have shadows that are a bit too strong right now, but otherwise look really good. And this also works if we are resetting the game. So totally happy with that. To reduce the opacity, all we have to do is get the shadow surface again and then set underscore alpha. This specific value for that I have set inside of settings. There we have shadow opacity. If I add this in there, we get much weaker shadows. And the rest of the game still works perfectly fine. And the shadows really add quite a bit to the game. It makes it look much more professional. Now, using a mask is a bit more advanced in Pi games. I have actually made a whole video dedicated on masks. Check this one out if you want to have all of the details about it.
All right, with that, there's one more thing we have to cover, and that is sound, which will be by far the easiest part. First of all, inside of Thunder init, we have to import the audio files. Let's add another section, audio, and there are only two sounds. First of all, self.crunch underscore sound. The sound file for that we create with pygame.mixer.sound. This one wants to have one argument, which is a path, which we create via the join method. We want to go up one folder, then we want to go to audio, and in that folder we have a file called crunch.wav. And that file we want to play whenever there's a collision between the snake and the apple, which happens inside of collision. After we have that, we also want to get self.crunchsound.play. And that is literally it. I can now run the game, and if I hit an apple, we get the sound. This is going to happen multiple times. And perfect. This is working out just fine. Besides that, we also want to have self. Let's call this one the BG music. For that, once again, we want to have pygame.mixer.sound with the join method. And we are basically going to use the same path. So let me copy it. The only difference is that the file for this one is called arcade.ogg. And this I want to play right away. So self.bgmusic.play. And this I want to play continuously. No matter how long the game is running, the background music should never stop. For that, I simply have to add a negative one in there. This argument defines the amount of loops that you have. So if you added a two, you'll play this background music twice. A negative one plays it continuously. Besides that, what we can also do is set the volume of the background music. By default, it should be a bit less loud. This we do with self.bgmusic and then set underscore volume. This wants to have a value between 0 and 1, 1 being the full volume. In my case, I'm going to set this to 50%, 0 0.5. And now I realized I forgot to close one of the brackets, but now if I run this... We have the background music, so this is working perfectly fine. Cool, and that finishes the entirety of the game. Now for this final bit, I didn't really include an exercise because the concepts got a bit more advanced or really simple, like for the sound. But if you want to challenge yourself, you can do two things that go much more advanced. Number one, you could add some kind of options screen where you can define the speed of the snake or how many apples you get, stuff like that. Besides that, you can also go much more advanced and draw a snake that moves continuously, which means we are changing the logic and not use this kind of cell-based movement. Instead, we are moving lots of individual points and draw a circle around that. This would take you a lot more time, but if you want to challenge yourself and become a really good programmer, this would be a really fun exercise. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the series and I'll see you around. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here and for that like i said you get access to every course without adverts without youtube adverts you also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else you get access to my premium courses on udemy and also early access to all of my youtube courses as well so the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below again i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'm going to see you in the very next one